In this video, we'll be learning about how to convert between a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. So we're going to start with how do you change a fraction to a decimal? We're going to convert between a fraction and a decimal. On the left side, I have several fractions here. And if we look at the denominators, here we have a 5, here we have a 10, here we have a 20, and here we have a 25. All of these denominators can be made into 10 or into 100. And that's our goal. We want our denominator to end with a 10 or a 100 over here. So let's start with 2 fifths. Could we multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by to get a 10 over here? Well, we know that 5 times 2 is 10. So we're going to multiply the denominator by 2 and the numerator by 2. And this is going to give us 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. And now we have changed our fraction to an equivalent fraction with a 10 in the denominator. Now this is going to make it really easy for us to turn 2 fifths into a decimal. All we have to do is say this fraction, 4 tenths. 4 tenths is easy to write as a decimal. The decimal of 4 tenths is 4 in the tenths place. Let's try the next one, 7 tenths. For this one, we don't even need to multiply by anything because the denominator is already a 10. We're just going to say this fraction, 7 tenths. 7 tenths is written as 0 0.7 in the tenths place, 7 tenths. 11 twentieths, what can we multiply 20 by to get 100 in our denominator? Well, we know that 20 times 5 is 100. So if we multiply by 5 in the denominator, 5 in the numerator, our new equivalent fraction is 55. 11 times 5 is 55. 20 times 5 is 100. 55 hundredths. Again, we just need to say the fraction to help us write this as a decimal. 0 0.55 hundredths. 55 hundredths. Lastly, we have 8 25ths. We're going to multiply that denominator by a 4 because 4 quarters makes a dollar, or 4 25ths is 100. 8 times 4 is 32, and 25 times 4 is 100. As we say this fraction, we are also saying it as a decimal. 32 hundredths looks like 0 0.32 in that hundredths place, 32 hundredths. So these were examples of fractions that you could turn into equivalent fractions to get a decimal. Some fractions, if we look at them on the right side, there's no way to change that denominator or this denominator 9 here to get a 10 or a 100 on the bottom. So for these fractions, we're going to let you go ahead and use a calculator. And all you're going to do is you're going to turn this into a division problem. 5 over 7 also just means 5 divided by 7. So if we go down to our calculator here, we can do 5 divided by 7. And this is going to give us a decimal. 0.714285 and it goes on and on and on. We're just going to round off to the hundredths place. So if we count tenths, hundredths, that answer would be 0 0.71. Let's clear our calculator and try the next example. 2 ninths. So we've got 2 divided by 9 equals 0 0.222222 and on. And again, we are just going to round this off to the hundredths place. So 0 0.22 would be our answer. To turn a decimal to a percent, we are essentially just multiplying by 100. When we multiply by 100, we're going to start at that decimal. We're going to move it over two place values to the right. That's what multiplying by 100 will do. So let's go 1, 2 to the right. And that would now be 25 with a decimal point after it. But when we write 25, we don't write the decimal point after. So this final answer is going to just be 25%. Looking at our next one, multiplying by 100, moving that decimal place over two spots. This would be 90.0. And again, we would just write this as 90%. Next one, moving that over two times, multiplying by 100. This would be written as 4 point. And again, we're just going to write this as 4%. Next one, moving our decimal over two places. 
For this one, the decimal is going to be left in the problem because we have that extra number after we've moved it over twice. So we're going to write this as 45.6%. For this last example, students like to see 0 0.8 and say that the answer is 8%. That's actually not going to be true because if we move this place value over two spots, multiplying by 100, we're left with this empty kind of hole here. We're going to fill that hole with a zero, and since we did that, our answer is now going to be 80 point, which is going to be 80 percent. We're now going to practice going from a percent to a decimal. The previous example showed us how to go from a decimal to a percent, so now we're just doing the opposite. This time, instead of multiplying by 100, we're going to divide by 100. So instead of moving two spots to the right, we're this time going to move two spots to the left. First, let's go place our decimals where they belong. So in this number, 30%, the decimal is going to fall right after that 30. 7% is going to fall right after the 7. 23.8%, our decimal is already placed right there. And lastly, 400%, we're going to place that decimal after the 400. So here we go, we're going to divide by 100 on each problem and move our decimal two places to the left. So we're going to go 1, 2, and that leaves us, if we replace our decimal here, with an answer of 0.30. This can also be written as 0 0.30, and it can also just be written as 0 0.3. Any of those are acceptable answers. We're going to now move to the next problem, moving our decimal over two places, 1, 2. Again, we're left with that hole. We know we need to fill that hole with a 0. Our decimal sits over here now, so we have 0 0.07, or this can also be written as 0 0.07. Our next problem, our decimal is already placed for us. We're just going to move it two spots to the left. So our answer is going to be 0.238. You can't forget to add that last number there onto the answer. This can also be written as 0 0.238. In our final problem, we have 400%. 400% is more than 1. It's more than 100%. So our answer is actually not going to be a decimal because we're greater than 1 here. So let's check it out. If we move this decimal over two places, it's going to sit right in front of that 4. So our answer is 4 point, or again, we know we can just write this as 4. The last thing we need to learn how to do is move from a decimal to a fraction. So in this bottom corner here, we have a little reminder of our place values after the decimal point. We have the tenths place, the hundredths place, and the thousandths place. And we name decimals based on the last place value the number falls in. So looking at our first decimal, we have 25. And then we're looking at the last place value that that 5 falls in. So that would be the tenths, hundredths. So we say this as 25 hundredths. And we're going to write it exactly as we say it. We're going to write it as 25 hundredths. Moving to our next one. We have 900 thousandths. And we're going to write this exactly as we hear it, 900 thousandths. Next problem, we have four hundredths. We're going to write that as four hundredths. Next problem, that six is going to fall in the thousandths place. So this is 456 thousandths. And we're going to write it as 456 thousandths. And our last problem, we have 8 in the tenths place. So 8 tenths is written as 8 tenths. This is an optional portion of the video. I'm going to show you how to complete problems on your math boxes that have to do with fractions, decimals, and percents. This is a frequent problem you may see in your math journal where they give you a box that has fractions, decimals, and percents. And in each line, you're missing two of the different pieces, and you have to figure out how to find those. So let's do this one together. We're going to start with the first line. In the first line, we have the fraction, but we are missing the decimal and the percent. 
Our fraction is 3 fifths. And this is a fraction that we can change the denominator to make it into an easier fraction to turn into a decimal. So we're going to try to make that denominator a 10 by multiplying the denominator and numerator by 2, which gives us the fraction 6 tenths. 6 tenths, if we say that out loud, is going to look like 6 tenths as a decimal. We know that to get the percent of a decimal, we're going to multiply by 100. So if we move that decimal over two places, it's going to leave us 60%. Moving to the next line, we are just given the percent. So let's place that 5% over to the right here. We're going to put our decimal in where it belongs right after that 5. And when we're going from a percent to a decimal, we know that this time we're going to move two spots to the left. So 1, 2, we're going to fill in that empty hole there, and we're left with 0 0.05. Now let's say this decimal out loud and that's going to give us our fraction answer. This is 5 hundredths. So we can write their answer as a fraction as 5 hundredths. Moving to the third line. This time they give us the decimal and we're missing the fraction and percent. Let's start by turning that decimal into a percent, multiplying by 100, moving our decimal over two places. So we're going to go 1, 2, and we're left with 70. Let's go back to the decimal and say it out loud to find out what our fraction is. 70 hundredths can be written as 70 hundredths. This would also be correct to write as 7 tenths. Looking at our third line, this time we are given the fraction 1 third and we're asked to find the decimal in percent. One third is one of those fractions that we cannot change the denominator to get a 10 or a 100. So we're going to go use our calculator here. 1 divided by 3, numerator divided by denominator, gives us the decimal 0 0.3333333 and so on. We know that we can round that to the nearest hundredths place. So we're going to write that as 0 0.33. To get our percent, we are multiplying by 100, moving that decimal over two spaces, giving us 33%. In our final line, we're given the decimal. We are going to find the fraction and the percent. Let's start by just saying this decimal out loud to get our fraction answer. This decimal is said 625 thousandths. So we can write our fraction as 625 over 1,000. And finally, to get our percent, we're going to move our decimal over two places, multiplying by 100. That leaves us right in between that 2 and that 5, so we're going to write this as 62.5%.